105, Vietnam was the right place at the right time. Even during their service life up to that time, there had been continued problems with reliability, and as recently as 1962, they had all been grounded. Though those problems had been ironed out, the plague of minor defects and a series of accidents had continued almost up to their first Vietnamese missions. But the thuds in Vietnam were to earn a completely different reputation as reliable and durable aeroplanes. They also earned a fearsome reputation as weapons. The importance of the Thunder Chief in Vietnam can be simply indicated. During the first five years of their involvement there, they flew an amazing 75% of all USAF attack missions. If the skies of Vietnam were full of bombs, it was because thuds put them there. targets, the raids relied almost entirely on the F-105s. The planes would heave themselves into the air with their loads of bombs and head for a rendezvous with a tanker near the North Vietnam border. For with the level of external stores they were carrying and the way that, increasingly, they had to fly flat out all the way across Vietnam rather than cruising to and from the target, their range had been cut considerably and even with full tanks the journeys didn't leave much to spare. Then they flew on into hostile airspace. At the beginning of the war, the North Vietnamese had only limited air defences and the earliest raids were relatively quiet. Soon, however, supplies of anti-aircraft artillery, surface-to-air missiles and MiG fighters began to multiply and the raids were flown into the teeth of the most intense air defence system ever tested in warfare. the enemy bridges and roads, truck parks and military bases, and the Vietnamese fought back ably with very formidable weapons. While the loss ratio on individual raids could not be considered critical, a process of slow attrition that was to halve their number had begun for the Thunder Chiefs. Only 833 were built and nearly 400 were to meet their end in Vietnam. 